translation of sowing and aligning with God's word on giving, at that time they were making combined incomes of $50,000 a year. And then within just a few short years, they're giving $50,000, you know? Now, th this is an anointing that is resident in this house, and I really believe that. I believe that um, we need to be very, very intentional about annihilating poverty. And no believer, no believer should live in lack. Every, every believer should have more than enough. Uh, the, the word says that he'll give you seed to sow, and if you sow, you'll have a harvest. It's as simple as that. So if you don't have seed to sow, then uh, just ask him, and he'll give you seed to sow. Now, if he gives you seed and you eat it, then you won't get a harvest. You've got to plant that seed so it can grow you a harvest. Amen? But I, I guarantee you the word is truth, and the word works. You know, Genesis 8.22, Pastor already shared it, you know, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and a corresponding harvest. And so I, I have great faith for all of you to abound. The miracles that we heard tonight, and there's more of them in the room here, the miracles that we heard about tonight are just the beginning. You know, there's way more provisional miracles that are coming. Some of you are going to be getting vehicles given to you. Some of you are going to be giving hou houses. You're going to be given houses, housing, living situations. You're going to be getting money back from the government. You know, like <laughs> they'll just, you know, you don't know why they give it to you. They just give it to you. It's because, you know. And 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 by the way, on that, how many of you, how many of you enjoy paying taxes? <coughs> Probably not too many. But I, I can change it for you. If you have a heart to give your taxes, don't pay them, give them. Give them as unto the Lord. I always, I always pray over what I give to the government. You see, I'm a, I'm a child of God, so in, in fact, I don't actually have to, to, to pay tax. <laughs> That's what Jesus said, right? I don't actually have to because I'm, I'm a daughter of God who owns it all. But... I love to bless governments. I just want to make sure it's stewarded properly. So I pray over what I give to the government. And I say it will only be used for kingdom purpose. It will not be used for evil purpose. The money that I give into the tax department, it can only be used for good purposes. So God protects that. God protects that. And I include that as seed. And therefore, I expect favor back from the government because I'm sowing into the government. Now, if you have an attitude of paying your tax, then there's no blessing back on that. But if you know, I don't really have to, in the spirit, I don't really have to because I'm a daughter or I'm a son of God, but I choose to in order to bless them, then it becomes a gift, not an obligation. When it becomes a gift and not an obligation, you can claim back the return on that. Isn't that good? I don't know if you all got that or not, but if you did... If you did, it'll, it'll put money back in your pockets from the government. The government will be writing you checks. And you'll say, thank you. That was, that was a nice blessing. Amen? But really, God wants you to be free in the area of, of provision. He wants you living the abundant life. Jesus didn't say, I came that you would have life in its leanness. He said, I came that you would have life and have it abundantly. And that, that includes everything. And all through the Bible... You will see God prospering his people in provision. And so don't be embarrassed or ashamed of speaking boldly about that. I mean, it's just like even Abraham, he promised to bless Abraham. How did he bless Abraham? In many ways. In spiritual ways, absolutely. In natural ways, absolutely. In family, absolutely. And in prosperity of material possessions, whoa, absolutely. Absolutely. It's in every area of your life. So never be ashamed of prosperity. In 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that in every respect you will prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. And, you know, John wasn't afraid to use the word prosper. And so just because you might have seen some, you know, excesses or, or um, people um, having a love for money or a love for materialism that has driven them into a wrong direction, 
don't let that swing you in another ditch, you know? You want to walk in the truth. And the thing is, God wants all of his people to prosper so that you can have more than enough pouring out of your life. And I, I just speak prosperity into this region, and I believe this whole region is going to be transformed. And people that were irresponsible in the past, maybe because they were on drugs or, or not managing their money properly, all of a sudden the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God is going to fill them, and they're going to be aligned to the purposes of God. In wisdom's left hand is riches and honor. So when you have wisdom, you get riches and honor. And in his right hand is life, you know. And so, you know, wisdom is a good thing to have. It is the principal thing and will help you build and sustain growth. And just as a little, um, just as a little tidbit here, tonight we heard a testimony about debt removal. And, you know, many of you are going to have your debts removed. We've seen it many times. I remember, you know, not that long ago, a couple having $60,000 worth of debt. And, and in a moment, it was erased totally gone. And it was the mercy of God, $60,000 forgiven. And it was just, you know, uh, amazing. God can do that just like that. But he wants you to grow in maturity. And so he might want you, instead of just dissolving it in a moment, he, want y he might want you to learn wisdom. I said to a couple a little while ago, they had a huge debt load because of entitlement. They just were a young couple and they wanted everything. So they charged it, charged it, charge it. They want it now. We'll just enjoy it now. We'll pay later. They went on a cruise. They bought a new car. They bought, you know, they just bought everything that they wanted. And then they had $40,000 worth of debt. And that's not a fun thing, especially when it's on a credit card, which is 18 to 24% interest on it. And that's called bondage. You're, you're, you're in bondage. And so I said to them, I said, you know, if you will, if you will walk in wisdom, you can have a plan to pay this off and I'm going to help you. And so I said, everything that you put towards this, I will match. Everything that you put towards it, I will match. And, but you've got to do your part. And you're going to have to trim your budget. You're going to have to live within your means. And um, we, 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 we drew up a budget. And they said, well, then we won't be able to do this. And we won't be able to buy that. And I said, absolutely. Are you willing to learn the wisdom? You're the one that spent the money and charged it. No one else did that. You did that. And so you have to be responsible for what you said you would pay. You went and bought it, and you're supposed to pay it because you told the credit card company that you would be responsible to pay that. So you have to be responsible. You just can't say, oh, I don't want to pay it now. You have to be responsible. <coughs> and so we worked out a plan, and we, I just moved some money around so that they weren't paying 18 to 24% interest on their cards and that. Um, but they just worked on it. And they went really lean. They actually went and got into a smaller house for a season. And they uh, streamlined everything. They sold one of their cars and did with one. And they streamlined all of their expenses. And they worked hard and they saved every single penny that came in to pay off their loans. And I said, you know, if we do this on this plan, this will be paid off between four to five years. We can get this, this paid down. They said, four to five years? You know, that's a long time. I said, well, you know, that's what you... That's what you chose when you bought all those things, you know, that you're not even enjoying now. The, the dresses you bought are, f are done. The uh, cruise is finished. You know, the car is, 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 is gone, you know. And so I said, you're left with what you chose to buy. And so you have to pay it. So I said, but I guarantee you something supernatural can happen if God sees your heart aligned because he wants you to have wisdom for the rest of your life. He doesn't want you just have a quick fix and get out of it and then fall back into it again. He wants you to be steadfast for all your life. He wants you to finish strong. So this season is going to teach you how to finish strong. So they started really being diligent, and I was so proud of them. They were doing really, really good. And the whole debt got paid off in less than three years. In less than three years, the whole thing, it accelerated. We can't even really figure it out. It just was gone. We started seeing this one go, this one go, and this one go, and it was just like, wow, they're gone. And so then they started to build sensibly. They started to save their money. And I want to say this. I, I just feel like this is for some people here tonight, is that over the years, over many years, my husband and I have, have helped many people get out of their debt, helped many people get, get their, their, 
them themselves grown. We paid off the bills. We put money in the bank. We bought people their cars, got them established in their houses. And I wish I could tell you that every single one of them remained out of debt after that. I remember this one single mom we were helping over many years. And um, she was struggling, but she did make a little bit of income. And I said, if you are wise, you can actually, if you're very careful, you can live within your budget and you can believe God for all the extras because he can bring them to you supernaturally and he can expand your realm. He can, he can give you, I know, because I used to live when there was no visible means of support. I used to live from God's hand to our mouth, okay? So I know what he can do. And I said, but you cannot spend more than what is in, in your hand. You have to walk sensibly with God. So we got all her bills paid off. We put money in the bank. We bought her a new car. We got all the kids' teeth done. We got everything done. And this is the third time we bailed her out. And I said, this will be the last time you have to do it. You have to do this. You can't just go spending money that you don't have. If you want a new dress, but there's not money in, in the budget for it, then you're going to have to pray and ask God to bring you that dress or wear your other ones. <laughs> Clothe yourself in the glory. But you just don't go buy something that you don't have money for. You don't buy something and then go pay on it later because that's called debt. And once you step into debt, debt is a spirit. Debt actually has a spirit. It's a spirit of bondage. And the Bible talks about it. It says when you are indebted to someone, you are their slave. And so in the spirit, you, you, you have a demonic slavery on you when you are in debt. So I said, don't go in there. Do you know that within one year, she was back in debt? She went and got the credit cards again. She started, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And within a year, she was already over $1,000 on her credit card that she wasn't paying off. Now, that's the spirit of stupid, you know. I mean, I have, I have compassion on her. I do have compassion on her. We proved that over many years. But if you are bailed out three times and then you're finally set up and given all the wisdom and all the budgeting and all the, the financial counsel and the life coaching and everything that goes with it and you've got all that input and you choose to go into a path of destruction, baby, you made your bed, you got to lie in it. You know, so all that being said to say this, don't get into debt. Be a good steward. Be a good steward of what God has put into your hand. I guarantee you that if you will choose to walk in wisdom, and if you will choose to even go through a season of sacrifice, if need be, you will rise up strong. My husband and I, we are so blessed. I mean, I just pinch myself all the time of, on the blessing of the Lord. He just Everything we put our hands to do is blessed. But I remember years ago when we were on the mission field and we were learning to, you know, live by faith with no visible means of support. We were living in one room, one bedroom in a two-bedroom apartment. In the other apartment, we had six, um, six packs, we called them. They were bunk beds that we made, two feet wide, three high, and we joined two sets of those together. So we called them six packs. We had six single men living in, those in, in the other room. Our family, my husband and I, we made a, a bed out of a board and put a privacy board at the end of it and bunk beds on the back of that for our kids. And we were in that room. We shared one bathroom and we had a little living room that we all shared. We were bar barely there. But we were so happy. We were so happy. We, we, we felt rich, to be honest with you. We didn't have any debt. We were uh, fed, you know, I mean, we ate our rice and beans sort of thing. We had food every day. We were able to lead people to the Lord every day. Uh, we were flourishing in what we were putting our hand to do. And we didn't mind in those beginning days, we didn't mind at all sacrificing and going lean, you know. And we walked to places, and we, we used the buses. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I even hitchhiked in Tijuana, you know. I mean, we just did whatever we did to get to where we had to go to meet the needs, but we didn't overextend and spend money. We didn't have, we didn't say, well, we'll just go and put this on credit and we'll try to pay later because the moment you do that, you're putting yourself in a demonic bondage. But we just remain saying, God, we're just going to believe you for everything that we need. 
We didn't have much office equipment. We didn't have a printer. We didn't have a fax machine. We didn't have anything. But we started calling those things in. In Jesus' name, we called them in. And they came in. You know, just use your faith to go beyond what you have the finance for. But if you step into that worldly system and start and start getting into it, you'll be in bondage. Same with student loans. I'm going to just bring this one up. So many people feel the cultural pressure to get into learning institutions, and many don't even know why they're going. Education is a means to an end goal. It's not just an end in itself. And so if you don't know what you're being educated for, isn't it a little bit crazy to go get educated? Why get trained for something that you will never use, and especially at the cost of the training? But the government w or the uh, loaning institutions will offer you all kinds of great deals. We can put you through school. You can, have, you can have your schooling. You can have this. Just sign here. And I have many friends who are eighty to $100,000 in debt to this day, probably for the rest of their lives, trying to pay it off outside of a miracle. And in their field, they're not even making enough money to warrant the payment they got to pay on that, and the interest is piling up. Because after you start work, you've got to pay that interest. And I'm just saying that God can do it for you without the loans. And don't be afraid. If you're a parent, don't be afraid to make your children partake of the responsibility. My parents were poor. And so when I went into nurses training, they didn't have money to send me to nurses training. I had to work three jobs and do the nurses training. And I graduated with honors. You know, I, I just like, you know, I was working, you know, until in, on, on, on one job till two o'clock in the morning. And I just did whatever it took to get my education. But I excelled in what I did because there was a price that I paid into it. In today's society, there's so much entitlement mentality. You just have to have it. You have to have it now, not wanting to pay the price for it. And, and, it's, and it's a demonic mindset. It's a demonic mindset. But... When you are groomed in the spirit to be like Jesus, <laughs> you will have wisdom and beauty and bounty, and you'll be a stronger person for it. Anyone can sign on a dotted line and get a loan to do something. you know. But when you have integrity in the spirit and when you're willing to work, and you know, there's sometimes a mindset, well, I'm in the kingdom, I won't even bother working. Well, the Bible has things to say about that too. If you don't work, you don't eat. Now, how do we balance that one out? with, you know, before the fall of man, there was no sweat or labor. But the thing is, diligence and responsibility is still part of the nature of God. And so because he's in us, we should become the best producers, not, not because there's a law that forces us to do it, or a religious mindset that says you have to to work or you'll die. It's like, no, I get to produce. I get to be a producer. I get to manifest the glory of God in a workplace and be the best producer there is. And I was talking to a young man not too long ago, and he says, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm called to be an apostle. And basically, he was sitting around his flat all day soaking. And I said, well, that's awesome. So, like, what, what you know, What's, what, what's coming of the soaking? He'd been, he said he'd been doing it for months. And, and I said, well, how are you being supported? He says, well, the Lord, you know, the Lord's going to take care of it. And he says, I'm just believing for people to support me. I said, what are they supporting? I said, to be honest with you, I wouldn't support you. I would not support you. <laughs> you know, because I want to sow into a ground that is producing. Okay? So... If you're just soaking, which is wonderful, that soaking has to produce something. It has to produce some action. You know, without, without action, <laughs> your faith is what? It's dead. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's being good to me. I believe he's awesome. I believe he's filling me. Well, that's good. But now act on that faith and, and produce. That is what you were created to do, to be fruitful and to multiply to fill the earth, to replenish it, and to have dominion. So it's like, come on, let's go and produce. And let's be the greatest producers out there. And let's, let's labor. I remember when, when um, 
when my husband and I came back from the mission field and and uh, there, you know there was there was no work. My husband, he he just wanted to be diligent in the Lord. It was the recession. Uh, you know, there was a big recession up in Canada at the time. No one could get work. My husband took his little bag of lunch every day, and he would walk from door to door in the community and say, you know, I just, I just want to be faithful and diligent to serve people, and I will do anything you want me to do. You don't have to pay me. I'll mow your lawn. I'll fix things. I'll wash your windows, whatever you want. Um, I just came back from the mission field, and I just want to be faithful. And I believe that if I am diligent, God will look after after me. So he would just, with all of his heart, serve the Lord and serve people in the community. Now, sometimes people would give him a bag of muffins or something. Or I remember one time he brought home a roast beef. And sometimes they would put money in his pocket. But do you know God honored? God honored my husband and, and, and prospered. Like, we are really prospered. Now, back in those days... We just had to believe by faith in God's provision. I mean, we, we didn't see a lot, but we were faithful to sow and faithful to steward. My husband had, has a ministry of helps, so he said, I'm going to exercise it in the community, and I'm going to serve. I'm going to do something with this gift to, to be able to be fruitful. And now, I mean, the Lord's blessing him so much. I mean, we've been so blessed, but I just... I just feel like speaking that out because I believe this church, this church is going to bring people out of the dung heap and set them amongst the princes of the earth. This church is going to have such faith for turnarounds in finances and, and provision that people that used to be broke and in debt and not even able to get work or whatever are, are, are going to shine in this community and have some of the greatest testimonies in America. I would just really believe that. And so let's receive the wisdom of God. Let's receive the wisdom of God and, and, and just be everything that God has you to be. Now, if you're overwhelmed now because you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I wish I had heard this 15 years ago before I got into my big pile of debt. Remember, those mountains can be removed. Those mountains can be removed, but you might have to look at your life. You might have to streamline a few things. You might have to downsize. You might have to give up some pleasures in order to show responsibility. And if you show responsibility, that's proving your stewardship. Good stewardship will be blessed. Good and faithful steward. Enter into the joy of your master. Amen? Amen. God is a merciful God, but he doesn't want to just throw his mercy away and have it trampled on and not, and not perform the results of it, which should be mercy and kindness shown unto what? Repentance. That's what brings you into repentance. Okay, this is a book I want to feature tonight. It's called God's Law of Attraction. And um, how many of you heard years ago about a book called The Secret? Um, it was uh, written by New Age contributors, um, and uh, it was a big deal. And there was a movie about it, too. And um, I remember at the time, I hadn't read the book, I hadn't he heard, heard the movie, but people warned me about it. They said, Patricia, whatever you do, stay away from that. It is the most demonic thing that's on the market today. And it's deceiving the whole world. It's just horrible. And I said, well, what is it? I don't know, but it's just evil. Make sure you stay away from it. And I said, well, what's the secret? I don't know, but I know it's bad, OK? So I thought, well, I mean, it just got my curiosity, right? So I went and bought the book. And um, I read the book. And I, I could see right away why I wouldn't want to encourage people to read that book, you know, because it was written by New Age contributors. It was written by people of uh, false religious mindsets, beautiful people. But when you're deceived, other people can get deceived too, right? Because you've bought into a lie. And so um, I, I was wondering as I started reading the book, I thought, well, what is this secret that they think they have? Because they're making these great claims. They're saying, when you learn this secret, you know, you will have your dream house. When you learn this secret, you will get promoted in your job. When you have this secret operating in your life, your kids marks are going to go off the charts and money is going to fill your bank account and your dream vacations will be manifest. I thought, what, what on earth 
do they think they have? What kind of secret do they have? And in a nutshell, um, they introduce it as the law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction is a scientific law. The law of affinity is another uh, na name for it. There's other names for it. But it's a scientific law, which basically is like attracts like. Okay? And so the basis of how they were exercising the law was however you position your imagination, your thinking, your desires, your longings, your senses, your feelings, whatever you choose to let into that portal is what will be attracted to you. In other words, if you dream about your dream house, it will come to you. If you think about your vacation, it will come to you. If you think about your, your promotion, it will come to you. So that's in a nutshell. I thought, oh, my gosh. You know, they're just, you know, they just, they're just, they, they just found out what we already know. Third John, chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that in every respect you will prosper and be in health, what as your soul prospers. So the way God, God created this law, and, and by the way, God is the one who creates laws. God creates laws. God creates the law of gravity, for example. But who exercises the law of gravity? Everyone who discovered it, right? Everyone. Whether you're a Christian, a Buddhist, a New Ager, a Satanist, whoever is operating in the law of gravity that God created. What about the law of aerodynamics? That's how I got here. I use that law every single week. I'm on planes every single week. And sometimes there are unsaved, even heathen, you know, sometimes Satanists even sitting beside me. I've had one once that I know of. And I've had many New Agers sitting beside me in the airplane. And they're also operating in that same law. Because God's laws work for all the people all the time. And if you discover a law, then you can operate in it. And it can be a blessing to your life. Now, Jesus, he has revealed the law of attraction to us in his word. It's all through his word. And so however you position your soul in its congruency with God's word and God's ways, when you connect in your soul, which is your mind, your imagination, your senses, your feelings, when you submit the faculties of the soul to the word of God, to God's will, then you attract. You attract what you're believing. You attract what you, you are are dreaming about. You start attracting it. But the thing with laws is they're, they're no respecter of persons, but they just work according to the dynamic of that law. They aren't prejudice. So, for example, this same law that will bless you as you align with God's word will curse you if you don't allow, uh, allow God's word to be your plumb line, right? So, for example, if I'm thinking negative all the time, oh, man, I'm just so broke, I'm so poor, I'm so, I'm, you know, I'm so, I'm so undone in life, nothing works out for me, everything's bad, and you start thinking about that, and the worst thing's going to happen, I can just see myself going downhill again, and I just know this is going to happen, and this is going to hurt, and you start thinking and meditating on those things, guess what? It gets attracted to you. You say, I knew it. Boy, am I ever prophetic. I knew it. I could feel it. No, you created it <laughs> by stepping into that law. So God wants us to be aligned with, with him because when you are, when you believe his word, when you are one with him, when you are one with his ways, with his thoughts, you will attract that. You will attract it. And you can build realms of favor. I think we sold out of Create Your World book. I've got a, a book, a manual, and a CD and a DVD set on, 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 on that subject. But, but this kind of thing is covered in that as well. Is, is that you create your world with the tools that God gives you in his word. Right? So God wants to partner with you to create his glory in the world that you live in. And one of the most significant um, keys that we find in scripture is this law, is the exposing of the law of attraction. So I want to give this uh, to you, Daniel, and you know, don't you just appreciate Daniel? Come on out tomorrow and tomorrow night because I just, I just have 
just now gotten to know Daniel. I just love you, Daniel, and everything that you're doing in the kingdom and this discipleship anointing that you are carrying. Oh, my gosh. It, it is. You are going to be a voice to bring this forth. I see a big gate opening, and these, these, these fresh waters are coming through. It's like the gate on a dam, and the fresh waters are coming through with power, and it's for a season of discipleship and mentorship, and you're going to be one of the most significant voices in that. And so, in Jesus' name, we bless you, and it's um, a privilege to, to know you. Okay, I want to talk about angelic visitation tonight, and it says in Hebrews 1, verse 14, whoa, <laughs> woo, that angels, whoa, that angels are ministering spirits sent out to render service to those who are heirs of salvation, so that's you. And there's many different types of angels. I, I, you know, I can't go into a whole teaching on angels right now in our glory school. We do a whole, whole teaching on it. And on Patricia King Institute, I have um, a course on discerning how to discern angels and other spiritual beings. And uh, and 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 it's just a kingdom reality that in this invisible kingdom that we are a part of that there are created beings, God-created beings called angelic majesties, angelic hosts that are here to minister to you. In this room right now, there are myriads of angels. You all have angels around you. It says, angels surround the righteous. And you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So there's angels. There's many angels that are active in this room right now. <laughs> Whoa. I love teaching people how to discern angels because I was actually taught how to discern angels. And ever since then, I've been not only discerning them, but having an acceleration of angelic activity. Now, I'm not going to have time to actually teach you because it's a, you know, it takes time to unpack the word, and I would want to do a good job on that for you. So I don't have time, but I do want to highlight a few things to you. One of the things about angels is that they, one of, one of their mandates is to bring messages from God to you. And so there's many different functions of angels, many different types of angels, but one of the significant things that we see in Scripture regarding angels is that they bring messages to you. Now, when God gives you a message, it needs to be embraced. He can give you a message in many different ways. It could be through the preached word. It could be through the reading of the word. It could be through a prophet. It could be through an angel. It could be from a visitation of Jesus himself coming to you and speaking to you. But when Jesus the word is brought to you in a prophetic sense like that, it is to be heeded. When the word of God comes to you, heed the word. So it is nice having angelic visitation, but you have to inquire, God, what is this angel here for? What is its assignment? What is it doing? What is the message that you want me to receive from this angel? Because angels are just servants. Like, you know, they said they're ministering, ministering to you. That means serving you. They're servants. They're ministering spirits, serving spirits. So they're just servants. So, for example, we don't worship angels, and we're not in too much awe over them, even though they've been standing in the presence of God for thousands of years and therefore carry his presence. If you stand in the presence of God, you carry his presence, right? You emanate his presence. So angels emanate the presence of God, and of course we love that, but we're not to be in awe or in worship of angels because they are God's servants for you. They are, in other words, your servants. So like I have I have people that serve me on different levels, and, and on a domestic level, we have a gardener, and we have someone who looks after the pool, and we have someone that cleans the house, and these are, 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 are people that come and serve our domestic needs. But when my house cleaner comes, I don't worship her. I don't say, oh, house cleaner, house cleaner, how awesome it is. Oh, I'm in awe of you, house cleaner. Oh, whoa, that you would even come into my house to clean. Whoa, you know, I don't do that. And when the guy comes to clean the pool, I, I, I don't say, whoa, the pool servant is here. You know what I mean? 
When the gardener comes, I don't bow down and say, oh, gardener, oh, gardener, whoa, you know. It's just that you, you honor them because they're serving you, so you want to acknowledge them and you want to bless them. You want to honor them in a rightful way, but you don't worship them or get all focused on them. Like when I leave my home, when the house cleaners are, I don't go tell everyone, oh, my gosh, there's... There's a house cleaner in my house, you know. <laughs> it's just going overboard, right? And so with, with angels, we want to keep the angelic realm in the right perspective because God's precious people who are exploring the glory and the different aspects of his glory, there, there, there is angelic glory for sure, you know the presence of angels that God sends, and they are to be honored because they're gods and they're here to serve you, but they are not to be worshipped, and we're not to go off on these tangents in experiences and the glory and forget the, the main and the plain, which is Jesus himself. Amen? So I just want to make that, that clear. And God wants you to have many angelic experiences, um, because he sends angels to minister to you. In fact, we heard the testimony tonight about um, the worship leader and what happened with the lightnings. I believe that there was angels all around him protecting him from, from being struck in a destructive way by the lightning. Angels were there to watch over him. I mean, I'm thankful for that, and I'm aware of that, and, 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 and they are part of our kingdom, so we don't want to ignore them, but we don't want to... We, we, we just need to know how to act around angels, okay? So remember that they are, they are God's servants sent to serve you. He hired them, <laughs> sort of, to serve you. Okay, now, when they come with a message, that message is being given to you by God. So when Gabriel, who was an archangel, came to Mary, it's interesting if you study that story out of Luke, and you see Gabriel coming to Mary. He greets her and says, Hail, favored one. Now, she's just a young woman. She's about 14 years of age. And that's kind of a, a shocking experience. But it's interesting that he gives her the prophetic word from God, saying that she is basically going to be the mother of the Messiah, is the word. And she starts dialoguing with the angel. Interesting, isn't it? Now, she didn't bow down to the angel. She didn't say, woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, She didn't even go to God and say, what do you mean by this? She just asked the angel for some information. So there, there, there seemed to be this comfortableness. I mean, in the midst of Gabriel, this is Gabriel, this comfortableness to dialogue, asking and inquiring, well, how will this be since I'm a virgin? la di da di da and so the angel answers. The angel responds to her with the word of God concerning her, her questions. And then she said, let it be done unto me according to thy word. So she acknowledges that the angel brought the word of God, and then she responds to it with an agreement. And at that point, the Holy Spirit comes upon her, overshadows her, and she conceives Jesus by the Holy Spirit in the exact way that the angel's message said. So you see, there was an acknowledgement of the angel, there was interaction with the angel, um, and, and there was an agreement with God um, coming into a respect of that word and being willing to comply with the word that was brought to her. Okay? So with that, whenever you get a word, whether it's an angel bringing it to you or... or um, a prophetic person or a, a child. I mean, God could use anyone. He used a donkey in one case. Um, so whoever brings the word of the Lord, when you discern that it is the word of the Lord, it's very, very important to receive that word. And the reason why I'm sharing this, because I'm going to give you a word that an angel brought on June the 4th, just a couple months ago, um, that is for you. And so I'm, I'm called to the Lord to deliver this word to you that the angel delivered. But I want to make sure when you get this word that you're going to be able to steward it well, okay? That you'll be able to get all the blessing because this word 
The Lord has five gifts to give you tonight and to impart to you tonight. But I want to make sure your position, because I don't want to just share a word and say, okay, here's five gifts for you. And, and we're all, yay, we're in the glory party. It's Friday night. Woohoo! And then we forget about it. I want us to really steward this word. Because it's holy. We sang about the holiness of God tonight. It's holy. And when he gives a holy word, it is to be, it is to be received in an honorable manner. Okay? So in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, we see that when Abraham received a promise from God, he stewarded that promise. And it says, in hope against hope, he believed so that he might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken, so shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, he considered his body, now as good as dead. And we talked about fact and truth earlier today. It could be a fact that you've got symptoms of a sickness, but the truth is, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So you're going to live in the truth and look after the facts, Right? but you're going to anchor yourself in the truth. So he's looking at his body, and the reason he said it's as good as dead is because there's not one little sperm floating around in there, nothing. There is not one little ounce of human ability to produce a child, nothing. Okay, and not only that, <laughs> it says that um, Sarah's womb was, was whacked up too. It was dead. There was no eggs left in her. No eggs left in Sarah, and no sperm left in Abraham. How are you going to make a child? How are you going to make a child? He was determined to make a child by the promise of God because the word of God had come to him, and he wasn't going to exchange the truth for a lie. So even after in the natural, it looked impossible, and in the natural, it was impossible. But God is the God of the impossible, and he believed God without wavering and stood on that word and didn't doubt the word. He just stood on that word. And so, at about 100 years of age, his son of promise is given to him. After he has any ability at all to produce it. Yay, God. And sometimes it looks like your situation is so impossible that in the natural there's nothing, nothing that can happen. But God is bigger than, than what looks impossible in the natural in your life, whatever that is. And if you've got a promise given to you from God, he will make it good. <laughs> now, Abraham, you see, once you contend in faith for the promise of God and you wage warfare against the elements that are pushing against you and you stand on that word and you keep that word, what happens when you finish the warfare season and that word is manifest is that it, it, it creates a realm for you to live in that has your name on it. And you don't have to fight it anymore. Like when my husband and I fought spirits of lack and poverty and all that back then, we didn't let them into our life, but we had to fight them, you know. And we learned how to execute the word against those mindsets and spiritual battles and stuff like that. At the end of it, we now have a realm of abundance. We will never have to fight poverty again because we have authority over it. We fight it for other people. We, we have something now, the authority that we have can squash poverty and lack in other people. We can give the tools that we have for other people now, right? Because we have the realm. So Abraham, he gets the realm. Because not only does he have Isaac, after Isaac, he has more children. In fact, after Sarah goes on to be with the Lord, Abraham's 135 at that age. When she goes on to be with the Lord, he gets married again and has more children. He wasn't letting the realm go. Now, he's in supernatural, a supernatural ability to produce. God is creating in him what was needed to produce children. And in the natural, there wasn't any. It's just like paying off your debt. How did that happen? It's just not there anymore. 
It's, there's no pages of debt that are, are showing up. That's, I mean, $100,000 worth just removed. That's supernatural. Okay? So when God gives you a word, take hold of it. We'll look at one more scripture, and then I'm, I'm going to share with you. How many of want, you want, want the word that God, that God has for you tonight? <laughs> How many of you want five blessings? Okay. So Hebrews chapter 4 says, Therefore, let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also, but the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. So God gave Israel a promise that was a, an eternally true promise, but they didn't believe it. And so because they lacked faith, even though the promise remained, God didn't take the promise away. The promise is always there, waiting for you to access it with the connection of faith. But they didn't do it, so it did not benefit them, even though the promise was there. So it's like even unsaved people today. Do you know that, that Jesus died on the cross for everyone? He didn't die on the cross and say, you know, while I'm dying here, I'll save you and you and you and you, and I've got a list up in heaven of the ones that, you know, I'll die for. But the rest of you, you just go to hell. I don't care about you. That's not what Jesus did. When Jesus died on the cross, he released the fulfillment of salvation to every single person who was ever created is available. Every single one. So the promise of salvation remains for every single person. But if a person doesn't accept it by faith, then it doesn't benefit them. Amen? It's the same with healing. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. But if we don't access it with our faith, then it's not going to benefit us, right? And I don't have time to unpack again the whole thing about how you walk out what is in effect and what is the truth and how to stay in the truth while you're waiting for the manifestation of that truth. If God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed 2,000 years ago, you were. End of, end of issue. Now, it might not manifest yet, so you might be called fighting, fighting the symptoms of it, fighting the... the the um, disease of it. You might be fighting that, but it's already secured in the eternal realm. You're already healed. If, if it was not to manifest in this realm, when you cross over, the manifestation is there. Amen? Because of the eternal truth. The promise remains. The promise remains. The promise remains. Okay? So, it is your faith, your stewardship of faith, that will give you the ability to take a promise that God is issuing and, and, and bring it into your life. It's like a downloader. You know, your faith connector takes the promise and pulls it down into your life, and then it manifests. That's the faith connection. Okay? Got it? So with that as a foundation, I'm going to share an angelic visitation that took place on the day of Pentecost this year, June the 4th, 2017, just before 9 o'clock in the morning on the day of Pentecost which I thought was kind of funny <laughs> because Peter said, we're not drunk as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. And it was just before 9 o'clock in the morning on the day of Pentecost. An angel came into my hotel room in Pasadena, California, just getting ready to go minister at a church. And an angel from God came into the room with five gift cards. And he says, I'm giving you these five gift cards. Now, the angel's name is the angel of increase. When God reveals the name of an angel to you, it is to be regarded because in that name, there is meaning. There is meaning in your name. But an angel of increase will manifest increase. That's what it's created to do is to serve increase in your life and ministry, to serve advancement in your life and ministry. So this is an angel of increase that came into my room, and in its hands were five gift cards. Now, I find this, you know, God is funny. How many of you know that God has a humor? So he's been giving me a sign for months, months and months. In fact, 
I've, I've had it for years, but not as pronounced as the last few months. And it's 111. 111 one, everywhere. Oh, I'll wake up at 111. One, I'll see 111 one, one on the microwave oven. I'll see 111 one, one on radio station. I mean, it's just crazy. 111's one, one, everywhere. And 111 has always meant to me, for years, Deuteronomy 111, which is, I will increase you a thousand times more than you are now. And so, how? So God had been giving me the, um, you know, the number of increase, and then this angel of increase shows up and gives me five gift cards that speak of increase. But what's really funny is a couple of weeks after I have this visitation, I'm in a meeting, and um, I was ministering that night, went back to my room, and I get a call after I get back to my room, and, and the host of the meeting says, Patricia, this uh, woman came looking for you after you left, and she wants to give you $30,000. Now, just days before that, a prophet, I was, I'm, I'm working on a project right now, and I had my faith out for $10,000. i am sharing with this prophet what this, uh, this project is. I'm really excited about it. And I says, and I'm believing for $10,000. It wasn't dollars. It was something else. $10,000. He said, Patricia, the Lord says, don't believe for $10,000. Believe for $30,000. I thought, whoa, okay. In other words, exponential amount, okay? So this woman says to the host, I want to give Patricia $30,000. This is like just a couple of days after the prophet says, believe for 30000 not 10000 even though we weren't talking about money with the prophet. And so I said, well, wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. And uh, he says, well, she couldn't see you tonight, so she'll be here in the morning. Meet her in the green room at such and such time. So I said, okay, be happy to do that. So I go into the green room, and there she is. And she hands me a beautiful envelope with a ribbon around it and everything. It's just beautiful. And she says, I'm actually here on behalf of someone else, um, someone um, that is a very successful businesswoman, wants to give you this $30,000 as a gift. And she said to tell you that the number is significant. Now, that's cool, right? This is right after I've had a visitation from an angel who gave me five gift cards, gift cards, and... I get this word about increase, okay? Increase from 10,000 to 30,000. So I said, okay, 30,000 is, is, is significant. And she says, now open up, the, open up the envelope. And in the envelope was a, like a menu for massage. It was for a spa. And I was looking at it thinking, that's interesting. And she said, just open it up, and I open it up, and there was a gift card in it. And it wasn't $30,000 cash. It was $30,000 worth of massage. $30,000 worth of massage in this spa in Southern California that I would have to fly to in order to use it. And the cost of the massage on the menu was just, you know, like about $120 or something like that. So... I mean, it would take me until Jesus comes to use up the massages. If the Lord gave me the airfare to get out there and the car rental to go out there and go to the massage place to use them. So I, I was laughing my head off. I thought, this is, this is so funny. $30,000 worth of massage. And why I thought it was so fun was because God, he speaks in such crazy, awesome ways that you won't forget is that he had come to me with an angel with gift cards. And then he sends a prophet with a word saying, don't believe small, believe big. It's not 10,000, it's 30,000. This woman, I don't even know her. I've never met her. She told me that she just watched me on God TV and YouTube and that she was really touched and the Lord prompted her to give me this gift of $30,000. She didn't know that I had had a visitation from an angel who gave gift cards, and she didn't know that the prophet said $30,000, but God knew, and he was going to tickle me that day. He was going to have fun and say, here's a gift card for $30,000 worth of massage. <laughs> oh, I, I, I just think he's so funny. But anyways, isn't it awesome living with God? So if anyone is going to Irvine and you want a massage, let me know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got some credit. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, um, so anyways, the angel gives me these five cards, and I'm going to tell you what these cards are because the Lord has sent me with this message for you. Everywhere I go and God says, bring this message, it's because he wants you. It's, it's just the same as the angel showing up in your room, okay? It's, it's the same message, except I'm the servant, okay? I'm your pool guy. I'm your housekeeper today, okay? And so, and so let me give you these words, but I want you to steward them. So that means when I give them to you, you have to receive them, right? So you're going to pull them out of the spirit into agreement, into your heart, and then they become yours. And the promise will remain, okay? The promise will remain. So the first card, you want to know what the first one is? It's awesome. The first one, and they're all about increase. So get ready for increase. Each and every one of you, you're in a season of increase. Increase, increase. And when you position yourself in God, it's always good increase, okay? So the first one is increase. Whoa. Increased bold love. Increase bold love. Now, right after the visitation came, I started feeling an increase of compassion and love when I would look at people. I would be in an airport or something and look at someone and say, oh, my gosh, I'm compelled to go pray for them. Or, you know, you're driving down the street and you've got to intercede for someone because you just feel, feel this bold love coming on you. Or you have someone sharing with you something that's going on in their life, and all of a sudden, everything in you, I mean, you've got the wisdom for them. You've got the answer. It's being downloaded from God. And, and you think, I've got to, with boldness, deliver this, or they won't be free, you know? And so, and so you just deliver it with bold love. And I felt an increase of this bold love, even in the pulpit. When I look out over the people that I get to serve, I feel this increased bold love in my mentoring uh, group. I group. Uh, I I mentor 1,000 people. 1,000 people on a private internet group that I I connect with every single day. When I wake up in the morning and I start praying for them, this bold love comes on me. I can't even explain it. It's just that I've got to impart to them. I've got to impart to them. I've got to give to them. I've got to stand in the gap for them because of this bold love. It's an increase of bold love. And now the Lord's calling me to expand that one. So I'm starting a new mentoring group this fall that I can hardly wait, and it'll be way more than that because my love has grown. My love is big. I, I can't explain it. It's just an increase of bold love. And so do you want that? It could be in, increase of bold love for your family, for your children, for your, you know, the people that you work with. So reach up. Reach up to receive that card from God. Remember, even though an angel delivered, it's God who gave it. So receive it from him. It's a promise from him. And just prophetically grab hold of it and pull it down into your heart and say, it's mine. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I've got it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Ho! Woo! Ho! Okay, so we can go home now. And did you like that word? You want you want four more? You want the next one? You want number two gift card? Are you ready? Okay, the number two gift card was increased. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Ho! And so many of you are going to be receiving more prophetic signs for your life, confirmations through signs. They might be numbers, or I explain to someone, I see signs a lot of times on billboards. I'll be, you know, driving down the street, and all of a sudden, I'll see something on the billboard that just, you know, speaks at me, and it's a sign, you know, little things. Whoa, last night, someone had a, a pink feather fall out of the ceiling right down on them and say, could that be an angel? I say, it's a sign of something supernatural. It could be an angel. Angels do have colored feathers, some of them. 
I haven't seen, I, you know, I, I honestly haven't seen pink ones but yet. But I've seen white and brown and gold. I've seen different colored ones. Oh, and that was a sign. It was a sign that there was angelic presence ministering. And signs aren't to be worshipped, right? You know, you don't drive down the street when you're trying to find your way here and you see a sign. You think, oh, I'm going to stop and worship the sign. No, it's just going to lead you to get to the, you know, to get to the destination, right? So inquire of the Lord. But signs and wonders, things that you wonder about. Oh, my gosh, what is that? Uh, miracles. We've seen an acceleration of miracles since we had this visitation. Because it's a season of increase. A season of increase for you and your house. So are you, are you wanting to receive that gift card? You actually want to receive increased signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay, well, reach out for that card. Pull the card in to your heart. You say, it's mine. It's mine. Now tell your neighbor, I've got it. it. <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> hey! Whoa. <laughs> okay, so what is the first gift card? Increase bold love. The second gift card, increase signs, wonders, and miracles. Yay. Yay, God. Thank you, Jesus. We receive the promise. You want the third one? Are you sure you can handle three? Yeah. Now, the thing about gift cards is when people give you a gift card, if you just keep it in your purse or your wallet and you don't go shop with it, it's, it, it's kind of useless, right? So you want to activate these gift cards. Amen? Use your faith to activate. Are you sure you want the third one? Yeah. Oh, you're going to love this one. Oh, you're going to love this one. Oh, you're really, 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 really going to love. Number three is going to make you go wild. The third gift card is increased harvest. Increased harvest. Oh, there's a season of increased harvest. Oh, it's a good season. Increase harvest. Woo! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right, so expect harvest in your households, in your families. Expect harvest in your communities. But this isn't only souls. This is about anything, any seed that you have planted that will produce a harvest. It could be the prayer that you have sowed into your next level of anointing. That prayer is seed that is going to bring forth a harvest in this season. It could be the decrees of the Word of God. In Mark 4 it says... The sower sows the word, and it brings forth a harvest. The word that you are decreeing into your lives or into your families is going to bring forth a harvest in this season. Anything that you have sown in this season will produce a harvest, an increased harvest in your life. You like that promise? I told you you would love it. I told you, you would go crazy over that one. Woo! Okay, are you ready to receive it? Into the glory. Lord, we receive this gift card of increased harvest. Pull it into your heart. Say, it's mine. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've got it. 
Thank you, Lord, for these promises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these promises that remain. We believe them. And we receive these gifts. We receive them. You see, they're gifts because you can't work for them. He just gives them to you. It's a season of increase. Whoa. Ready for number four? Are you sure you can handle another one? Oh, you're going to love this one. You're going to love it. Number four gift card is increased favor. The Lord surrounds you with favor as a shield. Favor. Favor. Woo! Oh, I love favor. I love it. I've been rejected and I've been favored. I like, like favor way better. <laughs> favor opens doors of opportunities. Favor promotes. Favor attracts blessing. Favor opens ridiculous doors. That's what's happening with you right now. So you've got to increase favor on your life right now. And it, God's opening up the craziest doors that doesn't make sense to you. Why would that door open? It's favor. Undeserved. Unmerited favor. Now, even for the harvest, it is so important to have favor. Amen? Because if you're out on the streets, for example, and you are ministering to the lost and you're trying to preach the gospel to them, if they don't favor you, they're not going to listen. I remember one time I was teaching a, teaching a prophetic evangelism school, and, and I, um, I, you know, activated the class. We went out two by two, and, and I was with this young man, and I had trained him, so I was there as his support and as an intercessor. And he stopped someone on the street, and we prayed for favor before we went out. And he stops someone on the street and starts saying the most ridiculous things. I, it, 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 it didn't make sense to me whatsoever. I thought, oh, my gosh, how's this man going to understand the gospel through what he's saying? And I'm, and, and I'm thinking in my mind, oh, my goodness, you know, this is, this is not going good. And all of a sudden, I mean, this man that he's preaching to is captured, captivated. And I thought, well, that's a sign and a wonder. And then... <laughs> And then the guy says, yeah, I totally get it. And I thought, you do? Because I don't even get it. You know, I don't get it. And the young man said, would you like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? He said, absolutely, yes. And I thought, how that ma man managed to come to the Lord through that message, I'll never know. It was only the favor of God. You see, you can have the greatest message and no favor, and someone won't get saved. Or you can have the worst message and favor, and they can get saved. Amen? Favor. And what about, what about in your workplace? What about in your workplace? Oh, man, when you get favor, you get to say things no one else can say. You get to do things that no one else can do. You will get opportunities that aren't given to others. You'll get raises that no one else gets and that don't even make sense to you. The favor of God is increasing for you in this season. Woo! Do you want that gift card? Reach up into the glory. Receive it into your heart. Say, it's mine. it's mine. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've got it. it. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Whoa. Well, you guys are full. <laughs> you guys are full. Oh. You guys are blessed and full. In fact, I don't think you can even take another gift card. I, I don't think, 
I don't think you've got room for another gift card. You do? Is there anyone here that wants gift card number five? How bad do you want gift card number five? Whoa. Oh, let's just find out from this side of the room. How bad do you want gift card number five? Woo! Wow! Woo, look at them! How about this side? How bad do you want gift card number five? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. God wants to give you this gift card. Wow. He is so excited to give you this gift card. You guys are amazing. This whole room of you, you're radical, passionate lovers of Jesus. Woo! What is the first gift card? Increase bold love. The second gift card, increase signs, wonders, and miracles. Third gift card, increase harvest. Fourth gift card, increase favor. Gift card number five. Now, this is an interesting one because I do not use the King James Version of the Bible. I use the New American Standard. I've been in it for, for years and years and years. It's my language, okay? But the angel brought this word in King James English. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, but I remember it. <laughs> Maybe that's why, because it was so weird. It wasn't in Hebrew, it wasn't in Greek, it wasn't in tongues, it was in King James English. Here it is. Are you ready? Increased generosity that maketh rich. That maketh rich. Now, since this, since this gift card came into my life, I mean, my husband and I have always loved to be generous. We just love it. We love generosity. But there's this passionate desire to give. In fact, we're about ready to give. I've always wanted to give a million-dollar gift. I always wanted to do it. And God says he'll supply seed to the sower. And just recently, he's given us the opportunity. We get to sow our first million-dollar gift. I'm so excited about it. But I was actually compelled compelled to give, compelled. I mean, the generosity overtook me. And then the Lord said, it's a generosity that maketh rich. And he said, this generous increase of your heart is going to produce a bigger realm of abundance within your life. It's actually going to be simultaneous with your, with your generosity. And this isn't just about money. It's generously giving of who you are, of your gift, of your time, of your, you know, attention, <laughs> you know, of your talents, of your abilities as you, as you give to others. It's just this ability to increase the amount that you can give of who you are and what you have to the world around you. <laughs> and it's directed by the Spirit. It's directed by the Spirit. Don't feel under compulsion because this generosity is a gift that will come by the Spirit, and you'll just feel that you want to, you want to release it and you want to bless it. <laughs> oh, Lord, you are so awesome. How many of you want that card? Reach up in and... Pull it down. Pull it down. Increase generosity that maketh rich. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You say, it's mine. You tell your neighbor, I've got it. <laughs> okay, what is the first one? Increase bold love. 
Number two, increase. Number three, increase. Number four, increase. Number five. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Whoa! Woo! Now you have the promise. And the promise will remain over you, and it'll benefit those who attach their faith to it. It'll benefit those who attach their faith, which is all of you. All of you are going to see the manifestation of that promise because you believe. Now, I believe that you are going to have increased revelation. A revelatory anointing is going to increase in your life. And I especially see it over you. I, I was praying for you this afternoon. And it's like, you know, I said to you over lunch that I saw divine intelligence on you. The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ is going to increase. It says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to God, but the things he reveals belong to you. And the spirit of revelation is being assigned to you. And there's an angel of revelation that's being sent to serve you. You're going to get more and more downloads. There's going to be more of a quickening of the awareness even of the downloads that are being given, the understanding that is being given to you by divine, through divine nature, through God himself, by his spirit. <sighs> more, Lord. And I impart the spirit of revelation. <sighs> I impart the spirit of revelation. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whoa. There it goes. There it is. There it is. There. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you feel, feel the burning? <laughs> it just started a few minutes ago. That's when it came in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is totally awesome. Okay, now, whoa, my hand is burning right now, actually, it's burning. I feel, I feel that the angelic realm that is already around us, God wants that realm to be made more aware, like he wants you to be more aware of it, the angelic activity. And Bob Jones told me that when the Lord sends an angel on assignment to you, it's with you for life. I said, where's the chapter and verse on that one? And he said, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And if he calls an angel to serve you, he doesn't pull that assignment back. I thought, I'll take that one. <laughs> I'll take it. And so every time I've had an angelic visitation, I realize that I'm adding to my angelic entourage, another member. And honor, honor, honor the servants that God sends. You know, you would honor any servant. You are to honor any servant. We are to treat them well. We are to treat any servant well. Anyone who serves you, treat them like royalty. Treat them with dignity. That's how God wants servants treated because the greatest in the kingdom is a servant of all, and he wants you to treat your servants well. Those who serve you, treat them well. And that includes angels. We're to honor them. We're not to worship them. We're not to be in awe in that crazy sense over them, but we are to honor the gift that God sends, okay? So many of you are going to come into an awareness of angelic, beings that are being assigned to you. And, <laughs> and when they are, they'll accompany you. I, I, I remember the first time that, you know, I had an assignment. There was just many assignments. But I, to, to this day, I see the results. Remember, it has to be measurable, too. When God does something in your life, it will be measurable. You'll, you will see 
see the outworking of that. You will see the fruit of that. And every angel, in fact, I remember when the angel Swift came. It was an eagle, actually. It came. I saw it with an open vision, that one. And I, I won't go into the whole story, but the angel Swift came and got assigned to us. And ever since that angel came, from the time I get revelation to the time of implementation takes place, is like that. And I've had people ask me all the time, how can you do that so quickly? I said, it happened when the angel swift showed up because that angel serves swift implementation, right? So get ready because there's going to be angels that you're going to become aware of that are going to serve you. And when they do, they'll be with you. Swift came, swift came many, many years ago, back in 1997, I think it was, is when swift came. And he's with me to this day. It's somewhat uh, over 20 years. 20 years, 20 years ago, I had that angel assigned, and it's still activated today. I can show you the results of that angel's activity to this very day. So I praise God for the help he sent. I praise God for, for the servants he sends to help you, to help fortify the assignment that he gives you. Amen? So are you ready to receive an increase in your ability to see, to perceive, and to understand the angelic realm. Okay, so I think what I want to do is lay hands on all of you. That's what I want to do. I want to impart it. I want to impart it. So this is what I'm going to do. Maybe we'll get this, um, this out of the way. And if we could have the worship team come forward and, I don't know, sing some party angel music. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> okay, so this is, this is what I'm going to do, is I want to lay hands on your eyes. I speak of a revelatory portal. It's one of our revelatory portals, okay, where we perceive the will of God, where we receive revelation. It's just a sign of spiritual insight, spiritual vision. Okay, so this is what I want to do just, just before we... Just before we get too organized here, just a minute. What I want to do is I want two lines formed over here facing me. Two lines. One on the left and one on the right. And if I can have a couple of ushers to make sure it stays two lines. Okay? Yep. And I'm going to be in the middle and you're going to walk by me and go out that way. Now, okay, everyone, I want you to listen just so that you're, you're positioned to receive, okay? Now, when you, when you come down through this, you'll come on each side of me, I'm going to lay my hand on your eyes. Are you listening? Shh, listen. Shh, listen. When you come down, I'm going to lay hands on your eyes. My faith is focused and attached on imparting to you the spirit of revelation so that you can perceive in greater ways than you ever have before. And I'm believing with my faith that the impartation is going into you, okay? The spirit of God is imparting it, okay? What I need you to do, because it's not me with a Midas touch, it's you and I together coming into agreement with the Word of God. And so I want you to be in a receiving mode. And the connection point will be our faith, and that's when you receive it. So in a way, you just say, I receive it. And bring forth, uh, you know, just lay hold of that revelatory anointing. Now, when you, you know, you're just going to come through very quickly. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to prophesy. I'm imparting. i got to keep my focus, okay? I'm keeping my focus of faith for every single person I pray for. And so I'm not going to go off that focus. I'm going to build the focus, okay? So you'll go through so that the next per person can come in. If by chance that you get blasted and end up on the floor or something, we'll have some, some draggers to <laughs> drag you out, okay? <laughs> whoa! 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 Okay, an angel just showed up. Did you feel that? An angel just came and stood here. So we've already got angelic activity here. 
Whoa, okay, here we go. Okay, worship team, thank you if you're ready. <laughs> All right, come on. Give us some kick drum, Chris. Set the captives free. You came to bring us liberty. My sin and my rejection, and your love and my acceptance. And now I'm alive to bring you. Your blood covers every sin. Your grace empowers me to win. My sin and my rejection.
Bless the Lord, oh, oh, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, and let all the earth be his command. Come on, sing it again. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh mighty ones. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all you his angels. Come on. And let all the earth be his dominion. We're going to bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Everybody bless the Lord. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. One more time. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, sing it out.
Come on. the Lord has assigned over your life and if you don't know what it is you really need to start praying because God wants to release kingdom kids into his mountains to be dread champions come on in this kingdom there's one Lord one God over all but he sent you into the world to take command over key strategic areas of life that we would have key influences in this region and across this world so I want you to say God what is it that you're trying to give me right now? Come on, God, what is it you're trying to give me right now? Now, I'm not talking about what he's trying to give you in, in a decade. I'm not talking about what he's going to give you before you die. I'm talking about what is he trying to give you right now? Because sometimes whatever he's trying to give you right now is the key to what's in a decade. So, God, right now, we just thank you, Lord, as we get ready to take dominion over this mountain, God. See, we're going to be working on this for a little while. But the church is designed to catapult champions to position. 
And we're going to work on this because the church has so long been trying to get somewhere when we were called already in position to catapult champions into their positions. So you can have multiple assignments. Don't worry. You don't have to get caught up in one. But we're going to ask the Lord to go ahead and release that mountain as we climb up that mountain. So, Father, we thank you right now. Let's just release the Spirit of the Lord right now because there needs to be revelation for this. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we thank you for opening up revelation. You're opening up revelation, Lord. We just use those eyes to see right now. Come on, we use those eyes to see right now. Exercise the gift you were just receiving and you'll begin to walk in it. Now we're going to be, begin to proclaim as an army dressed for battle. We put on our Ephesians 6 armor and we're going into war. Church right now in the name of Jesus. We just released this generation for the generals of this world, God. We thank you, Lord, for the generals of this world being released, God. Raising up dread champions, God. Raising up David's mighty men, God. Raising up kingdom momentum, God, in this earth, God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's get ready to worship. I want you to take that mountain by, by faith. And I want you to take that mountain with violence. Come on, the kingdom suffers violence, but the violent ones understand. It's not going to come to you. You are sent once. You are sent once. So go and take the land. All right. All right, I'm looking forward to where the Holy Spirit is taking us. You, sir, behind the drums. I don't remember your name, but I know the Lord has anointed you to play drums, so I want you to give me a kick drum. Come on, kick, 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 kick. Come on. Yeah. Come on, we're gonna praise the Lord.
Come on. Where's going to pray out loud to the Lord? We just thank you, God, that you've given us the weapons of our warfare in this place. That God, you call us more than conquerors.